Hello and welcome to this service of morning prayer for St James and St Peter's on Sunday the 16th of January. We're pre-recording this and it will be available on our YouTube site, which is why you're watching it, because we'll have an all, our all-age service at St James at half past ten and with children on camera. We don't want to share that live. Uh, there'll also be songs of praise this afternoon at four o'clock here in St James uh, if you want to come along. Uh, that's also on this Sunday the 16th of January. The service, uh, there won't be any words up on the screen, but I hope you'll be able to join in from home. We'll include today's reading and some time for prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. This is the Jubilati, an ancient song of joy used by the church throughout the ages. O be joyful in the Lord or the earth, serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, it is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and bless his holy name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We're going to have a moment of confession to bring ourselves before God and allow his Holy Spirit to cleanse us. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that through Jesus we have access to your throne of grace and mercy. We confess before you now where we've fallen short of your love, where we've turned aside from your right path for us, where we've done things our way rather than your way. Heavenly Father, we confess these things to you, we turn from them. We pray, Lord, that you would forgive us and cleanse us, that you give us grace and strength to look to Jesus and follow him in the week ahead. In his name we pray. Amen. The Collect for this Sunday, the second Sunday of Epiphany. Almighty God, who in Christ makes all things new, transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Some words from the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. The night still covers the earth and darkness the peoples. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land, or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight nor moonlight shine upon you, but the Lord will be your everlasting light. Your God will be your splendour, for you shall be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. The reading for today, we're looking, uh, we're following the uh, the heads, the, this is the last one of the various heads that we have up on the walls here in St. James, also depicted at St. Peter's. So we're on the book of Esther uh, for this weekend. Here's uh, from Esther chapter 4. The story so far, uh, Esther has become queen of the Persian Empire, a vast empire, uh, occupying most of the known world in biblical times. Um, but her cousin, uh, Mordecai, uh, has offended a leading official, uh, who has persuaded the king 
to issue an order that all the Jews throughout the kingdom are to be killed. Uh, and Mordecai now goes to Esther, uh, hoping they can do something to save their people. When Mordecai learned of all that had been done, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and went out into the city, wailing loudly and bitterly. But he went only as far as the king's gate, because no one clothed in sackcloth was allowed to enter it. In every province to which the edict and order of the king came, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping and wailing. Many lay in sackcloth and ashes. When Esther's maids and eunuchs came and told her about Mordecai, she was in great distress. She sent clothes for him to put on instead of his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther summoned Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs, assigned to attend her, and ordered him to find out what was troubling Mordecai and why. So Hathak went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate. Mordecai told him everything that had happened, including the exact amount of money Haman had promised to pay into the royal treasury for the destruction of the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the text of the edict for their annihilation, which had been published in Susa, the capital, to show Esther and explain it to her. And he told them to urge her to go into the king's presence to beg for mercy and plead with him for her people. Hathak went back and reported to Esther what Mordecai had said. Then she instructed him to say to Mordecai, all the king's officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned by the king has but one law, that they be put to death. The only exception for this is for the king to extend the gold scepter to them and spare their life. But thirty days have passed since I was called to go to the king. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer, Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance from the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my mates will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you want to know what happens in the rest of the book of Esther, go and find it in your Bibles or online, uh, and you can see uh, how God works in answer to the prayer and fasting of his people. We're hoping that uh, this morning's sermon will be available later on, uh, on Sunday, for people to watch on YouTube. Some words of praise for God's salvation. Uh, this is the Psalm of Zechariah from Luke chapter 1. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. So we turn to prayer uh, for ourselves, for our church and for our world. Uh, I'll offer some introductions to prayer, then, then a silence for our own prayers, then the response, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of today. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us today to give you thanks for your blessings in our lives. (coughs) 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our churches, St James and St Peter's. We give you thanks for them. We pray for everyone involved. We pray for those who are currently struggling with ill health or difficulties within families or work. And pray, Lord, that you would give them special grace at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> Excuse me. We pray, Heavenly Father, for our nation. We pray for our government. And pray, Lord, for godly and good leadership. For some clarity in the current mess that surrounds the government. And pray, Lord, that in the midst of all of that, good decisions can still be made on the issues that affect us. We pray especially for relief for those facing poverty and difficulty with rising fuel bills and cost of living. And pray, Heavenly Father, for a compassionate response to that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we pray for our world. We thank you, Lord, for the work of mission agencies like Open Doors, our mission partners, who take Bibles and relief to Christians in many places. We pray, Lord, for the threats to peace from nations like Russia and China. We pray, Lord, that you would keep, keep peace between nations Enable the richer nations to be open-hearted and open-handed to those who have fewer resources. We pray that the, um, the vaccine for COVID can be widely and generously shared. And we pray for wisdom and a common mind to seek peace among our world leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, just a moment's silence for anything or anyone that's on your hearts at the moment. Um, if you haven't been praying out loud as you've taken part in this, can I just encourage you to name one or two things before the Lord now uh, as a way of bringing them to him today. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Believing the promises of God, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us through the wonders of modern technology. We hope we can see you in church soon. Uh, if you are shielding or you're uh, self-isolating because of COVID and you need a bit of help with getting prescriptions or getting food, please do get in touch with us. Uh, also, we're currently renewing our address lists at both churches, so if you'd like to be included in the church directory that is made available only to those whose names are in it, um, then please do get in contact with me or with the church office and we can include you that way. Uh, thank you for joining us. May God bless you. May God bless this week to you. And please do get in touch if there's anything you need prayer for or anything you need help with. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs>